What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, what's going on in the United States, in Washington, D.C., money, investing, and the $3.5 trillion stimulus package, which will be the largest stimulus package yet to date. we got a lot to cover here. President Biden just passed an executive order, a presidential executive order, that he says fulfills one of his campaign promises. We're going to be talking about that, a move or an announcement by former President Donald Trump regarding the vaccines. Pretty interesting information there. We're also going to be talking about the next upcoming stimulus package, multiple different things to discuss there, and how the terrible jobs report is prompting President Biden to urge Congress to pass stimulus now and what that might mean for more stimulus to come. Multiple different things to discuss, so let's jump right in. If you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. Remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will keep you up to date with everything going on in our country and with this next upcoming stimulus package, which will be the largest stimulus package yet to date at around $3.5 trillion. So if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us and let's jump right in. Okay, as you can see here, President Biden signs a presidential executive order directing release of some 9-11 documents on almost the 20 year anniversary. You can see here, this is as of today, 9-3-20. One. President Biden on Friday signed a presidential executive order directing the Justice Department and other agencies to review and release certain documents related to the FBI's investigation of the September 11th, 9-11, 2001 attacks. Biden touted the move as the fulfillment of a campaign promise. And it is likely to provide some solace to families of victims of the attacks who have for years pushed the government to declassify and make public more information around the events of 9-11. This comes as the 20-year anniversary is now just a week away. Biden's order directs the Justice Department and other federal agencies to begin a review of the documents and requires the Attorney General to release and declassify information over the next six months. We will see how quickly this is done. Quote, we must never forget the enduring pain of the families and loved ones of the 2,977 innocent people who were killed during this worst attacks on America in our history. For them, it was not only a national tragedy and international tragedy, Biden said in a statement, it was a personal devastation. For 20 years, children growing up without parents and parents have suffered without children. Husbands and wives have had to find a way forward without partners in life. Brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts, loved ones and friends have celebrated 20 years of birthdays, families, gatherings, and milestones looking at an empty chair at homes with a hole in their hearts. Quote, my heart continues to be with the 9-11 families who are suffering. My administration will continue to engage respectfully with members of this community, President Biden added. I welcome their voices and insight as we chart a way forward. House Intelligent Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, a Democrat from California, said the panel would oversee the review to ensure that all agencies adhere to the president's guidance to apply the maximum degree of transparency allowed by law when conducting the review. The issue of the classified documents has been an ongoing cause for many families of victims of the attacks. A group of families issued a statement last month urging Biden not to attend any memorial events this September 11th unless the administration released documents surrounding a potential link between Saudi Arabia and the attacks. The group of 9-11 Families United issued a statement Friday praising President Biden's executive order. Also, because of the terrible jobs report today, I've seen an increase of comments uh, as of our last video of saying President Biden should go ahead and do an executive order 
for stimulus checks. I've seen a lot of these comments in the last video citing that former President Donald Trump did do an executive order for a similar type of stimulus checks when he did the executive order, executive order, former President Donald Trump did an executive order for six weeks of unemployment bonus stimulus checks of $300 per week for millions of Americans, which equated to $1,800 worth of stimulus checks for unemployed Americans. The question is, is that if former President Donald Trump could do it, could current President Biden do it? This is a question. It's a very gray legal area. I remember this because I was reporting on it when former President Donald Trump did this. The Democrats said, can he do this? And I remember the Democrats saying, well, we're not really sure if he could do this. But the problem is, is that to challenge him, we'd have to challenge him in the court of law. Very similar to how the Republicans just challenged President Biden's eviction moratorium. And they actually did challenge him. The Supreme Court challenged him and overruled him. But the Democrats chose to not challenge former President Donald Trump's um, $300 weekly stimulus checks for unemployed Americans. It was a targeted stimulus check, you could call it. It was just for unemployed Americans. They chose to not challenge it, and the stimulus checks stuck. I personally, my personal beliefs are if former President Donald Trump could do a stimulus check, a targeted stimulus check, the Democrats chose to not challenge it in a court of law. My personal belief are that's the, pre the precedence is set that if a former president could do a stimulus check through executive order, a current president could do it as well. Whether or not he does it, well, that is a different story. And whether or not it would be challenged in a court of law, that would be a different story as well. My current beliefs, if you're asking me my opinion, I think, again, former President Donald Trump did do an executive order six weeks of $300 per week for unemployed Americans, stimulus checks, unemployment bonus checks, whatever you want to call them. He did do it, and it equated to $1,800 worth of checks for millions of Americans. He did it. And the Democrats could have challenged him in a court of law, but they chose not to because it kind of would have been egg on their face. I mean, you're going to not. You're going to challenge, the, the, this would have been the Democrats challenging him at the time, you know, former President Donald Trump was the president. The Democrats would have been, I mean, I don't know, they would have looked bad, put it that way. So they decided not to even challenge him at all, and the stimulus checks stuck. I think the exact same thing would happen right now if current President Biden issued an executive order, a targeted executive order for stimulus checks, whether he did it for unemployed American, whether he did it for low income Americans, I think he could do it. The then thing would happen is, let's just say he did a targeted stimulus check for people making under $50,000. He could do it. He could issue the executive order. Then the Republicans could choose to challenge him in a court of law like the Supreme Court. Now the Supreme Court is ruled by Republicans, so it could be overturned. Whether or not they would challenge him and it would be overturned is two different things. But my personal beliefs, my opinion is, because again, when if you've been following the channel, we know that um, in a court of law, it often comes down to opinions. And that's why when we look at these unemployment lawsuits, that are being done in um, several different states. Some states are winning um, the unemployment battles. Some states are losing the unemployment battles. It comes down to whether the judge is Republican or the judge is Democrat. And we looked at that in the Supreme Court where they just struck down the eviction moratorium and six judges, the, the Republican judges, all voted to strike down the eviction moratorium that was done by a Democratic president. And the three Democratic judges in the Supreme Court all voted to uphold it. So it was six to three. It often comes down to a political opinion. I personally think that the president could do an executive order for a stimulus check because the former president did it. So the president is set. If the former president could do a stimulus check, executive order, target a stimulus check, whether it's for unemployed Americans or low income Americans or whoever, whatever group he chooses to do, 
the precedence is set. The former president did an executive order for stimulus checks. Why couldn't the current president do it? It's already been done. Whether or not he does it is a different a different thing. Now, I think it would be easier. Well, not necessarily easier. I think it would probably be more politically correct. I don't know. I think it would probably just be easier to just include it in the next stimulus package because we literally have the largest stimulus package ever right upon us, $3.5 trillion, and they're working on it right now. So just include it in there. It'd probably be easier to do, maybe less controversial. I don't know. I feel like the president could do it, but it'd probably just be easier to just put it in the next package. I don't know. You let me know your thoughts. All I do know is that the former President Donald Trump did do an executive order for $1,800 worth of checks, unemployment checks, stimulus checks, whatever the terminology you determine, whether you call them stimulus checks or unemployment checks, or uh, if they're not stimulus checks, what do you want to call them? Uh, unemployment bonus checks. I mean, we're getting, uh, we're splitting hairs here if you don't want to call them stimulus checks uh, because they're bonus checks, they're bonus stimulus checks. They're stimulus checks, guys. Come on, let's be real here. Um, they were stimulus on top of your normal unemployment checks. But the former president did it, so I don't think that the current president can't not do it because he can't. But here's the current here's the current situation now, is that the economy is is pretty much doing terrible. It's pretty much doing terrible. The August 2021 jobs report, the entire country of 330 million people, the whole entire country added only 235,000 jobs for the whole entire country. This is not just one state. This is not like the, the state of California added 235,000 jobs or the state of New York added 235,000 jobs. This is the whole country combined added only 235,000 jobs. There's more people going on unemployment every single week. 350,000 people are filing for unemployment every week. Then the whole country added in jobs for the entire month. Yeah, figure that one out. That's how bad the economy is doing right now. When you combine that with just four days ago, we had 280,000 people test positive for the virus in one day. That's more jobs than we created all last month. We have more people testing positive per day than jobs we created for the entire country all last month. Yeah, figure that one out. And President Biden knows that we're in trouble. Literally, the first thing he did after seeing this jobs report is, you can see the headline here, President Biden urges Congress to pass his economic plans after weak jobs report. Our country needs these investments. He knows. He, he knows. It's just he's trying to spin this as best he can. But, I mean, when you only crave 235,000 jobs for the entire country, that's 330 million people in the entire country. I mean, that's terrible, guys. That's terrible. I mean, I mean, literally the first thing that came out of his mouth was, guys, we need to pass the stimulus package and the infrastructure package. Our country needs these investments. I mean, he knows that everything is doing terrible. Virus cases are doing terrible. Um, Jobs numbers are doing terribles. Unemployment bonus is ending. Unemployment bonus is ending. Unemployment extra weeks is ending. The eviction moratorium is ending. Uh, it's literally a perfect storm out there. It, it's it's literally it's an economic perfect storm. It's what more could get worse? We just had Hurricane Ida come through and ravage the entire Gulf Coast. Fox News says August jobs reports puts Biden administration in a bit of a pickle. That's honestly Fox News being uh, nice. Yeah. Yahoo Finance says how the August jobs reports changes the Fed's plans. Even the Fed, the Federal Reserve says, um, yeah, we're, we're in for a long haul. And that, um, 
the Fed is going to have to continue the stimulus that the Fed does, the bond buying program, keeping interest rates low. And um, things are just not getting better. Things are just not getting better at all. Biden says there's no question the Delta variant has weighed down the jobs report. You couple that with the CDC studies that says the child infections are now higher in low vaccination states and that now that more than 20% of weekly cases by the end of August are now children. Yeah, so the problem is, is that children under 12 and under can't even get vaccinated. They're now going back to school. And um, yeah, a lot of schools aren't even letting children wear masks. They're not requiring children to wear masks in a lot of cases. And now 20% or more than 20% of weekly cases are now children. Yeah, this, this Delta virus is no joke and it has the potential to really crush our economy. There are a lot of countries around the world like Australia and parts of China that are in full-blown lockdown, as well as New Zealand and other different countries that are in full-blown lockdown. And uh, it's ravaging the United States when it comes to cases and deaths. And deaths. Uh, and this is a very somber fact, guys, but, but check this out here. We can see right here how many people died in the 9-11 attacks. 2,977. 2,977 died in 9-11. Look at how many people died yesterday due to the virus. 2,932. It's literally almost the exact same amount right here. 2,932 people died yesterday because of this virus right here. You can see it right here on the screen. It's the same amount as 9-11. That's crazy. Every day, guys, every day. The seven-day average is 1,521. This is according to Google. You can look this up right here yourself. And um, almost 40 million people have caught, caught it total. And almost six, well, 646,000 people in the United States have died from this virus. That's a lot of people. And in total... 4.5 million people. Wow. Worldwide. And it's not getting any better. It is not getting any better. So I don't know what to tell you here. I'm just reporting you here the, the facts, the news. That's why I like to show you the guys' stuff right here on my screen so you know what I'm saying is true. Not just, you know, spitting this stuff out of my mouth. I'm showing it to you right here on the screen. Multiple different sources every day. Show it to you right on my screen so you guys know it's true. But honestly, this is uh, this is going to, we're going to be in this for the long haul. We're going to be in this for the long haul. The economic recovery, if you just push the virus aside, um, we've had recent reports from medical experts that say that this will likely be an endemic uh, this will go from a pandemic to an endemic, and this virus could be around forever. Could be around forever. Not necessarily. We don't really know that for a fact, but it could be around forever. Um, you can let me know your thoughts on that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. The economic recovery is probably going to take years. The 2008-2009 recovery took four to five years for unemployment to get back to normal, and that was without a virus. I personally think there's going to be several more stimulus packages or stimulus-type packages or packages with stimulus items in there to help the economy within the next 12 months. The November 2022 elections, which is when the House and Senate go up for re-election, the Democrats are really, really worried about that. Why? Because they have control of the House and Senate. And they don't want to lose control of the House and Senate. They want to retain control of everything. The, of course, the Republicans want to gain control of either one so that they, you know, Mitch McConnell said in a recent interview uh, that they're just trying to get control of either one, you know. Um, and Mitch McConnell said in a recent interview that they, they can't impeach President Biden because they don't have control of either one. Honestly, the Republicans would impeach President Biden right now if they could. They really would. Um, I, I feel like that Republicans would impeach, they, they would have impeached um, 
former President Donald Trump in the Senate if they could have. Um, they, they did impeach him in the House, but they couldn't impeach him in the Senate because they didn't have control of the Senate. And I feel like Democrats would impeach or uh, reverse that, that Republicans would impeach current President Biden right now if they could for the Afghanistan thing. I, I feel like it's kind of sad. It's kind of a sad situation that Republicans would would always want to impeach a Democratic president and Republicans. And the Democrats would always want to impeach a Republican president. It's kind of sad that they're always at each other's throats. I feel like they always want to just impeach the other guy. And I feel like it's going to always be like that. Come let me know your thoughts. But I feel like, is it going to always be like that? Is it going to be the next president, the next president, the next president, the next president? They're always going to, as soon as the first thing comes up, they're going to just always try to impeach them. And if the other party has control, then they're going to do it. And if they don't have control, then they can't. It honestly kind of feels that way. And I feel bad for any president that if the other party gets control of both, the first thing that comes up, they're gone. No matter what it is, first thing that comes up, if you're a part, if you're a president and the other party gets control of the House and Senate, you're gone. It's the smallest thing that comes up, it, it could be a phone call, and and you say the first wrong thing, and you're gone. They're gonna they're gonna impeach you like hotcakes, man. You're gonna order hotcakes from McDonald's the wrong way, and they are gonna impeach you like that. Whether you're Republican or Democrats, it's just like impeachment is like the, the other party is just waiting to do it, man. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. They are just waiting to get you. It's just that's just how the how our country is, man. It's there's there's no uh, united as one does not hold true for Democrats versus Republicans. We might be united as one on this channel, but um, as an extended family, but not are uh in 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 uh in politics no way they hate each other like they're like mortal enemies yeah so anyways tomorrow is um our wedding anniversary me and my wife have been married for 10 years and we've been together for 17 years so my wife will be on the show with us tomorrow um, my son Julian will be on the show tomorrow. I don't know what order it's going to be. I'm taking my wife out to dinner tomorrow as well. Um, after we film. So it'll be a fun day. Um, I think my wife's going to make the Julian's adventures here. We're, we're going to have that come out here sometime this weekend. Uh, Julian's adventures number two. So it'll be a fun weekend, uh, here on Labor Day weekend. I hope you have an amazing Labor Day weekend spending it here with us. So we'll have our normal episodes throughout the weekend. Um, but yeah, it'll be a fun weekend here. Hope you're going to have a, an amazing Labor Day weekend here with us as well. So, um, yeah. Make sure to tune in. Remember, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. This bottom video is how to get rent assistance. If you haven't watched that yet, how to get rent assistance from the government up to 12 months. And this video is our first episode of Julian's Adventures. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and we will see you in the next video.